Europe is going through the world's largest nation-building projects. Over the past decade, the share of those identifying solely with their country has fallen, whereas those identifying with Europe have risen steadily. It's the result of rapprochement between the peoples of Europe in the face of collective challenges. Shock to the UK's decision. The economic fallout from the coronavirus. Vladimir Putin unleashed on Ukraine. But also careful policy by European institutions to craft a common identity. And it's an effort that will play a determining role in the direction that European integration will take. So are Europeans actually starting to feel European? And what does that mean for the future of Europe? This video was powered by the European Cultural Foundation in anticipation of Europe Day. The difficult thing when talking about European identity is that there's no clear definition for it, and so it's relatively hard to measure. That's because there are several strands of European identity, whether it be the economic community, the cultural or political entity of the European Union, a geographic identity with the European political community, or the Council of Europe. And so when talking about European identity, polls tend to ask about trust in European institutions or the feeling of being European. Yet despite this difficulty, there's a tangible shift going on. If we take a look at how people respond, young Europeans are more likely to support the European Union and relate to the European identity than their elders. If we consider these two Two metrics with the graph from the start of the video, then European nation building is moving in a positive direction. While there have been contributions by the European cultural and media sector with the contributions of Into Europe, it should come as no surprise that the main actor and organization looking to build this up is the European Union, which has somewhat of a larger budget than I do. Ever since it started organizing elections in the 1970s, it's been concerned with how to relate to Europeans. And the EU has a difficult task at that. And that is because most of what the EU does isn't directly visible to its citizens. It doesn't run schools, it doesn't give out social benefits, and it isn't involved with things like the retirement age that visibly affect people on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's a choice by national governments to keep control over key policy areas and their national sovereignty. But those things make it very hard for people to understand what the EU actually does and as a result makes it difficult to identify with it. So the EU is constantly looking to promote policies that are both of interest to European citizens and that make it relatable and relevant. And on some level it has been successful at that. The EU flag is now plastered everywhere, EU citizens now carry around European passports, and the Erasmus program allows students to experience another country at the cost of the European Union. There's also this interesting phenomenon where EU politicians get into a feeding frenzy about cancelling daylight savings every couple of years, which draws a lot of attention to an area where the EU could actually weigh in, whether or not that actually is relevant and useful for people. These initiatives and the European sentiment that's being created doesn't mean that Europe is on the road to becoming a country, or that national governments will give more power to European institutions like the European Union but it does increase the likelihood of the EU surviving in the future. Apart from the easy access to other European countries, this sense of European identity has an important impact on two main aspects, solidarity between European countries and the policy direction of the European Union. This is a map of the willingness of European countries to help out others in the event of a major crisis. Most countries willing to help out by a large margin, though in general it needs to be said that Northern and Western European countries benefit from greater solidarity than other countries. But according to a separate poll, the help being provided depends very much on the type of crisis, with most countries willing to help out in the event of a natural disaster or an epidemic, but not a debt crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic recovery fund, for which both Spain and Italy were the largest beneficiaries, would have been difficult to sell to a public not already convinced on helping out other countries in the first place. But dealing with these crises also has a direct impact on European identity itself. Following the 2008 financial crisis and 2015 euro crisis, trust in the EU by Greeks who were subjected to severe austerity collapsed to the lowest level of the entire European Union. On the other hand, Brexit and the response to COVID-19 only strengthened the trust in the European Union and increased European sentiment. But it also has implications on the policy directions of the European Union. If Europeans see their identity and way of life as something worth protecting, then the EU will follow suit to try and make it a reality. Europe That Protects and the Geopolitical Commission, two of the EU's latest endeavors, are all reflections of how Europeans define their identity and ways of life. And it's something that comes up again in opinion polls. That identity means that strengthening the border to limit migration takes precedence over other priorities like economic reform, where there is less solidarity and less pressure by European countries. Despite the increased visibility in many policy domains, there have been some limitations to the EU's efforts. While the success story of Erasmus is great for university students and the EU is seeking to expand it to students following vocational education, 
it's simply hard to have Europe and the European Union reach everyone. In fact, there are roughly 180 million people in the European Union that have never left their own country. And so to reach more people, then what better way than having a holiday called Europe Day celebrated across the continent? That would be the crown jewel of the European Union's efforts to create a truly European identity, one that's shared by everyone regardless of social or economic status. If you'd like to find out more about Europe Day and the activities linked to your country, go check out the website in the link down below to find out more. Once again, this video was powered by the European Cultural Foundation. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe for the latest updates and analysis on European news.